Hello everyone, welcome back, Dom here and in this video I'm going to show you how to use the drum editor in Cubase and how to use it right, right after this. Okay, like we all know, Cubase is probably the king of MIDI editing, of the MIDI sequencer, and there are quite a few reasons why. But one of these reasons is the drum editor. So in order to show you the drum editor today, I'm going to be using my modern 80s drum kit. It's right here. Thank you so much for the huge love for the modern 80s drum kit, my friends. I'm so glad you like it. I'm so glad you have loads of fun with it. So let's talk a little bit about the drum editor in Cubase. I have created an event here. So let's actually double click on it. And as you can see, the default thing that comes up is the key editor. This is the key editor, right? I mean, there is nothing wrong with the key editor. You can program drums with the key editor. It's really, really good. But the drum editor gives you some features that the key editor doesn't. And that's what I'm going to talk about today. So let me make this a little bit more compact and I'm going to leave it here. And now let's talk about the drum editor. There are a few ways that you can make it show up. First of all, you can go here in the drop down menu and just select drum editor. This is really cool, really easy, and it integrates really nicely in your project window. But what I like to do is I actually go and open it the full window. And if you don't have a shortcut like I do, you can go here to MIDI and then open drum editor. Just make sure you have selected a MIDI event before you do this, okay? So let's see it in all its glory. Here we go, this is our drum editor. Now the great thing about the drum editor is A, it's focused on drums. So you can see, if I go C1, I click on here, it's my kick drum. If I go here, D1, I have my snare, right? If I go here, I have my clap and so on and so forth, my toms. Everything is right there. So I can immediately start programming my drums without any distraction. Now I'm going to show you the next thing that makes the drum editor really, really special. We have a drumstick tool. And this means that I can take this and start drawing notes right here. Very, very easily. Now, if I want to remove a note, I just click on it again and it disappears, right? Now, if you want to remove all these notes that I just created, the only thing you need to do is go to a note that you've already created, click and drag, and then you can remove all the notes. It's that easy. Another cool thing that you can do is if you hold shift, you can just place a note and then you can move it around before you just place it, see? And also, you can change the velocity by dragging your mouse up and down, see? But now I can let it go here and I've created my note. If you click and drag, you're going to create a lot of notes in sequence, okay? So shift allows you to move the notes according to your snap value and you can place it wherever you want while you're also changing your velocity. How cool is that? Did you know about that? Let me know in the comments down below. And if you like this video, hit the thumbs up button. I would really appreciate it. It really, really helps. Now, another tip that I want to share with you, and I'm pretty sure that many Cubase users don't know about this, is if you go here and start creating like a 16th note pattern, like that, and you hit Alt, then you can start dragging this across the different elements. So again, some really, really cool features if you hold the modifier keys, very, very powerful. And I'll keep going with the modifier keys. If you hold Control and Shift on Windows or Command and Shift on the Mac, you'll be able to place the node anywhere you want, see? Regardless of the snap value. How cool is that? Very, very powerful, but let's move on. I want to talk about a very, very cool thing that you can find in the drum editor that you cannot do in the key editor, okay? So let's say I want to do a four to the floor kick drum pattern. Now I can of course go here and change my snap to quarter notes, okay? And you can see that now I have my snap 
being on quarter notes. But then if I wanted to have 16th notes on the closed hi-hat, then I would have to go here and change it again, okay, and go 16th again. Instead, what you can do is you can select the snap right here for every element. So let's say that for my kick drum, I want it to be quarter notes, okay? And maybe for my snare, I also want to be quarter notes. And maybe for my close hi-hat, yes, I want it to be 16th notes. You will see though that they still don't change. We still have a grid of 16th notes. Why? Well, in order to activate this snap value that's exclusive to every element of your drum kit, you need to go here in the grid type and select use snap from drum map. And check what happens when I select this. See, now my kick drum is quarter notes, my snare is quarter notes, but my hi-hat is 16th notes. So now I can go ahead and do my kick drum first. Then I'm gonna do my snare. I don't need to worry where I'm gonna click because the resolution is so coarse that I can immediately do this very, very easily. Now, if I go to my close hi-hat, you will see that I can just click and drag and now I have my hi-hat pattern. Perfect. And I can do this for pretty much every element. It's really, really fast. Now, the other thing that I can do is I can go here to my velocity and start editing the notes. And the great thing about the drum editor is that when I select my bass drum, you will see that I have my kick drums right here. When I select my snare, I have the velocities for my snare. And when I go to my close hi-hat, I can just go here and just start, you know, randomizing this very, very nicely very quickly as well. So, Now, another very cool thing that you can do with the drum editor is, you know, imagine this, you're working on a groove and you're trying to stay focused on a specific four bar loop or eight bar loop. Well, the drum editor allows you to do this because you can activate this thing right here, the independent track loop. So when you activate this, you can set a loop that is completely separate to the loop that you have set in the project window. So as you can see, I have my cycle markers right here between bars one and three. But if I open my drum editor, you will see that I have my loop here on bars one and four. So this four bar loop. So if I play this, It will cycle. See? It keeps playing even though my cycle marker outside is not set on the same loop. I don't even have my cycle activated. But this allows me to hear this drum loop in context of the song. So again, if I go here and start playing this... It will cycle. And it's so cool because actually I don't have this loop right here, but it's still kept on playing so I can focus on creating the drum loop in the context of the song. How many of you knew this? This is such a cool feature and nobody talks about it. It's so, so powerful. Now, obviously we have all the usual suspects. We have quantize, we have soft quantize if we want to quantize a little bit and not completely on the grid. We also have quantize ends, quantize lengths. We also have reset quantize. This is all, you know, the same like the key editor. We also have the length in case you have any drums that have a little bit of length, maybe like 808 style kick drums and stuff like this. But the last thing that I want to show you before I end this video is the agents. And the agents are super, super cool. Because as you can see, when you open the drum editor, you have all these elements that you might not need. But maybe in this case, I might want to say, you know what, I'm going to use the close hi-hat. I'm going to use also the open hi-hat here. And maybe I want to use the tom here, the crash at the very beginning. 
and maybe some toms. Now, instead of seeing all these elements here that take so much space, what I can do is I can go to my agent and say, okay, show me just drum sounds with events. Okay, and then if I activate this button here, check what happens. <gasps> <sighs> bliss. I only see the elements that I care about and none of the elements that I'm not going to use. Maybe they're not even utilized by the drum kit. Now, speaking of being utilized by the drum kit, you also have another option here. You can say show drum sounds in use by instrument. This will work for VST free plugins. So with Groove Agent, with any instrument that's VST free and it kind of broadcasts these notes to Cubase. In my opinion, in this day and age, every plugin should do this. It's still work in progress, but most of the Steinberg plugins will do that. The modern 80s drum kit will also do that. So if I do this, you will see that I have just the notes that are utilized by the modern 80s drum kit, for example. But most of the times I go to drum sounds with events because I want to make sure that I have the cleanest view possible for my drum editor. And the last thing I want to show you is that you can rename the instrument names. For example, if this is not an acoustic snare, I'm going to call it 80s snare, which is really, really cool. So this is how you can use the drum editor inside Cubase. I think that if you're recording drums, especially if it's electronic drums, I think the drum editor is a much better choice than the key editor. It's faster, it's more precise, and it doesn't show you all these long notes because most of the times electronic drums tend to be one shot samples. So you don't need the length. But in case you want to show the length, you can still do this. And if you want to do this, you just click this icon right here and then you basically turn your drum editor into the key editor, sort of. It's more like a key editor view. Sometimes it's really, really useful. It's good to be able to go back and forth. So this is the drum editor in Cubase. Let me know in the comments down below. Do you use the drum editor? Do you like it? And do you prefer it to the key editor? I'd really like to know. If you like this video, you know what to do. But until next time, groove on.